Let's talk wrong turn. This one with the deformed cannibals in it from 2003 with Eliza Dushku. And I always forget his name. Des- Desmond something. The guy who plays uh, uh, Detective Quinn in, in Dexter. So he's just going to be called Quinn <laughs> until I get his name in this movie. But this isn't like a favorite movie of mine or a favorite series by far. Like The sequels are not great. But it's fun for what it is. Like, I feel like there's not enough that happens in this. Maybe it'll change on this rewatch. I doubt it. I've seen this movie a handful of times since it came out. But I feel like it's missing, like, some of the awesome kills that are in some of the sequels, even though the movies themselves suck. I feel like they could have had better kills in this. And I feel like there's only, like, three people who die in this movie. But... Let's find out. <laughs> Let's rewatch and talk about Wrong Turn from 2003. And yeah, the polo was so close for a little there between Texas Chainsaw 3 and this. So I'm just going to do Texas Chainsaw 3 after this. So that way, both kind of win. It'll probably I'll probably do Cycle 3 tomorrow too. So we'll get all three of them in there. If there's any laughter for the next few seconds, you'll know why at the end of the video. So we open up with the scene with the couple... There's a river nearby, and they're climbing up a cliff. And then he finally gets to the top, and she realizes no one's no one's moving, no one's answering her call. And then he's viciously killed. And then she finally gets up there, and she's viciously killed. Both are basically off-screen kills. They are. So, there's nothing great about them, but cool intro. Desmond Harrington. That's the uh, guy who plays Quinn on Dexter. I always forget his last name. Now, the cannibals, I know they change throughout the series. But in this one, I mean, they all have names. <laughs> Let's see if I remember these. I know there's like one eye and there's three finger, right? It's not the other one. Well, no, you wouldn't have three eyes. So, yeah, it's one eye, <laughs> three finger, and sawtooth is the real fucked up looking one everybody remembers. It looks like an old grandpa who's been homeless on a meth binge for the last 20 years. That's how that guy looks. And everybody remembers him. But I'm pretty sure those are the names of the three of them. Because then there's like another one that you see in the sequel that's not in this one. But then we're missing one of the ones from this movie. It's a whole thing. I'm not, I don't remember the names of the wrong turn deformed cannibals. I'm pretty sure we have no way of knowing either, because none of these people, like, when they're getting chased down, none of them are screaming, watch out, three fingers around the corner, we got Sawtooth behind us. Nobody tells you the names. I'm pretty sure they just put them in the credits. So, you can't blame me for not knowing them. Between the cinematography and the music playing right here, this is like the epitome of early 2000s horror. Like, makes you miss early 2000s. So, Chris is his character's name. And he ends up, he has to get to L.A. by the end of the night or something for business. And there's a whole jam up on the highway. So he ends up, again, he doesn't make like a wrong turn. A wrong turn to me is if you're heading somewhere and they're like, oh, we got to make this left up here. And then someone makes a right instead. And then that's a wrong turn. None of these people make a wrong turn. They just get lost. So they could have just called it lost. That was a thing. He stops at, like, the gas station, and this this guy there that is so disgusting looking, he just has, like, one tooth, and there's literally flies just flying around him. He's drinking Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> like, he's just chugging on a thing of Pepto. This is somebody you don't ask any questions to, let alone directions. Or who knows? Maybe it's some backwoods gas station attendant trick. That they can get hammered on the job. They take a thing of Pepto, and they pour most of it out, it's 10% Pepto, 90% liquor, and they're just getting hammered. And then if their boss stops by, they're going to say, everything going well? And they say, hey, I'm just drinking some Pepto. And they'll look at you weird, but... Man, remember CDs skipping when they didn't work right? 
I feel like that hasn't been a topic of conversation for a very long time. And then Chris sees a deer, and he must have had a random thought like I just did, because then he just crashes into the other group's car. <laughs> like, it's just right there. And they come out, and we get introduced to everybody, and there's, what, like six of them? Right? Like, it's like two couples and Eliza Dushku. So five of them. Pretty sure, unless I'm forgetting somebody. I love the one guy who's, like, engaged to the shorter chick, not Eliza Dushku, and not the one who dies very early <laughs> with the red hair, pink hair, whatever it is. But him, he's funny. He starts saying, like, when uh, Chris crashes into them, he starts, like, saying, I'm so sorry, I'll pay for all the damages. And he's like, listen, he said he'll pay for all the damages. And then he looks down at his bicycle, and he's like, actually, you know, my, my bike, he kind of messed up, too. <laughs> That's funny. Just start blaming it all on this guy. He says, I can carry that bag. You just had the whole car accident thing. And then they leave the stoner couple alone here. For some reason, I don't know why they're, they're trying to go get help or something. I don't know why they stay behind, but they do. And then she just randomly starts blowing him. And then they meet their demise pretty quickly. Yeah, whatever color I said this chick's hair was, it's not that. <laughs> it, it's as red as can be. So, oopsies. So after a series of weird lies... Like, this girl out of nowhere was just so nice and just said, Get them trousers off, boy. Stop being a sissy. To quote her exactly. But she gets in Chris's car and she starts looking through shit. And she says, like, yeah, he's out of smokes. And, like, there's no cigarettes. But there there are. And she takes one out and she starts smoking one. And he's asking, like, from their car, like, Do, oh, shit, we got no food. Does he have anything? She's like, nope. And she found food. Like, <laughs> why she's lying to him? I have no idea. But... He ends up disappearing, and then she ends up looking for him in the woods, and she gets pretty brutally killed, man, with the chain around her face, and it's being pulled against her mouth. The effects look pretty good. But, I mean, she kind of deserves it. She shouldn't have lied about the smokes and the food and shit. That's fucked up. <laughs> Don't ever joke or anything like that when it comes to cigarettes or food or any vital thing you need when you're lost and broken down on a road. Are you serious? And I mean, why not? You can't talk about this movie without talking about Eliza Dushku. Like, or she's just gorgeous in this movie. And then this is the second movie in 2003. You know, I was just thinking about it. Because Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Jessica Biel's her, her whole outfit is iconic at this point. Like, nobody forgets her outfit <laughs> from that movie. Kind of the same thing here. And then they come across the deranged, deformed hillbilly killer's shack. And they should all be beaten with bull-peen hammers on the sides of their head for being stupid, for spending more than one second in this place. Because as soon as you walk into this shack, it looks like it's screaming at you, we are murderers <laughs> who live here. Like, please leave, or you, we're going to come back and kill you. The place is screaming this at them, and they're spending way too much time here. Yeah, the mason jar is full of blood or whatever the hell that shit is in the fridge. That would be my absolute goodbye point, and I'd be running out of there. Anytime you find a mason jar, or even worse, multiple mason jars, and they're not containing some type of food, drink, or pot, <laughs> run like a motherfucker, because something's wrong. No one should have that many mason jars of anything, let alone blood and, like, weird shit in them. Because that's distracting as soon as you see it, and then you got a whole thing going on in your head, and you don't hear that the people come home. And here they are. They're ready to come home, and there's no way out of this place except for the front door. <laughs> like, I don't know. This is an amazing scene, though. The whole scene when they come in, the hillbillies, and then they drop the redhead right in front of them, and the Eliza Dushku whatever her real name in this story is, her character, I can't remember. And uh, Chris, they're laying down there, and then they just drop the redhead's body, and you can see it, her face is all mutilated from getting choked out earlier, and the blood starts coming like closer and closer to them, and they're trying not to freak out. That's a great scene. Very tense. What can you imagine being in that situation? Can you imagine being having to hide in a weird-ass shack and then just watch a friend of yours that's just dead already, just dropped in front of you. And then what do you do? Like, you can't say anything, you can't scream, nothing. Otherwise, you're going to get killed too. And then they start hacking the body apart and stuff. 
awesome stuff. And the engaged couple, they're in the closet. Now I've been asked to come up here, get you both out of the closet. Man, this is some crazy shit. Why won't you both just come out the closet? And they said, now I'm starting to get angry. So I pull out my gun. Oh! And they're looking through their little the, the keyhole. And they're seeing just their friend being mutilated. And I can't imagine being in a situation like this. I feel like the foundation from the remake, I, I feel like that's better. <laughs> like, at least that you could say, like, wait, wait, listen. I'm good. I'm good at this. I don't know what I'd say, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be the bard. I'm, I play guitar. Like I'll bring entertainment. All right, you can live. I'd rather that than have to deal with cannibalistic weirdos. And while we're at it, these hillbilly people—they live off the grid. They're not entirely stupid. They do show some problem-solving skills. In a few scenes from now, when they try to burn them out of the radio tower or the lookout tower, whatever they go up into, and figure, hey, we're not going up there, then we're going to make you come down here. So they're not completely stupid, So, but they live off the grid, and they have to set these traps in order to catch people like by hunting them, because they know that like one look at any of, the, any of these three people, somebody's going to run for the hills. Like, nobody ever sees somebody like this and has a reaction other than, oh my god, like, what is this person? <laughs> what is wrong with this person? Sorry, it's, just, it's a natural reaction. You tell me you see this guy halfway down the road. What are you going to do? Because <laughs> I can tell you now, I'm going to switch directions, <laughs> and I'm going to go back the other way immediately. So they have to hunt them. They can't just, like, use... It's not like they're Ted Bundy, and they can finesse people into, like, come, doing whatever they want. They don't have that charm that Ted Bundy had. But we can just assume that they've been doing this for a long, long while. And there's probably a lot of people that went missing in this area. At what point do the police and state police or anybody just like, all right, we're putting out a sweep for a few days. We're going to search this whole area because this is the area that a whole bunch of people have been reported missing. And then they just find the shack. Once they find the shack, they found the killers. Like, I don't know. Cool shot when then the next morning, or it looks like the next morning, whenever they fall asleep, uh, then they try to escape. Seems like the next morning. <laughs> From all accounts and reports, it seems like the morning. And they have to leave. And then Chris smartly grabs the uh, the coil and stuff up on the door. Because it's going to make a loud-ass noise when they're going out. And he's holding in. His hands start bleeding. They all start leaving. And then he looks back. And then you just see. And yeah, his, his fucking name is One Eye. It has to be. Because he has one eye. So, like I said, it's not three eyes. And what type of name is Two Eyes? <laughs> so he's definitely One Eye, a One Eyed Freak. His his eye is open already. He's looking at him. That's a cool shot. But then they all run, and they should get away ninety nine percent of the time. But here they don't. And you see here all the cars that they've taken, like all the people and stuff. That who knows how long this goes back. This could just be a recent dumping ground. They could have like nine other ones of these. So who knows how many actual victims they've had. But this is enough to warrant a goddamn manhunt. <laughs> like, I'll tell you that. I mean, that too. Nobody has ever came across this junkyard of missing people's vehicles. Like, ever. We see at the beginning with the opening scene that this is people hiking this area. The people are uh, rock climbing. So people do hike in this area. Nobody's ever came across this, all these cars with blood smeared all over them and, like, never contacted an authority. Said, listen, we found a bunch of, like, vehicles with blood and a whole bunch of weird shit. Like, you want to come check it out or anything? <laughs> they say no, I guess. And then the events unfold. So, yay, hillbilly show up. And now they're thinking, all right, we got to cause a distraction, have somebody run in one direction. And then they left their car running conveniently. So, hop in there, get out of here. And then they'll reconvene with that one person. So Chris goes to do it and instantly fucks the plan up. 
<laughs> he's just shot, falls to the ground. Uh, that He messes up so bad that the other guy who's engaged to the girl, he has to go running in the other direction, get their attention, and he dies because of all this. So then Scott's running through the woods and gets hit in the back by arrows when he's just feet away from the car, and he's dead. And then they come and they pick his body up. Heartbreaking, though, for, like, she gives a good performance. I forget who it is, and if I had to care, I'd look it up, but I really don't. But she's some somebody who was famous in the early 2000s who plays the, the engaged girl, the non dushku if you will. Can't think of who it is, but, like, a little bit from now, I remember, I'll never forget this line from her. It's where she says, like, but I want him back, like, the way that she says it. She gives a good, good performance there. You feel her pain. The makeup, though, and the prosthetics on the the cannibals, they look great. Like, all three of them look really cool. So, yeah, they go up the watchtower, and they find a radio, and they try putting a call out a few times, and then cannibals show up. They're real dedicated once they find you. Like, it's been all day. They got, they got torches. It's nighttime now. And they try climbing up, and they can't get in. And then they decide, we're just going to burn you guys out. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to burn to death. Uh, then they have to think smartly and escape through the trees. <laughs> I just thought when they show them jumping out of the the watchtower and they're trying to grab onto the branches, when Chris first jumps out, kind of like the shot of like the trees kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park. So it'll be hilarious while he's jumping out of Pterodactyl just came by and just snatched him out of the air. But then when Eliza Dushku, back on track, <laughs> when she jumps out, and she hits that branch, man. She absolutely broke multiple ribs, but she didn't break anything, apparently. This is the best kill in the film for me. When they're in the trees, and then... I always forget which one is which. Is that Sawtooth? Or Seesaw? Whatever the hell his name is, the old-looking one that I said was like a messed-out grandpa. <laughs> he shows up, and he just whacks the girl, the non Dushku from behind with the axe it goes right here uh, then her body folds down you just see the axe stuck in the tree with the top of her head awesome like best kill in the film like without a doubt and good thing they got a real fit group all in shape and everything like for this whole situation man <laughs> because imagine like today maybe one person out of ten is going to be able to be jumping around branches and shit like this today. Are you serious? Or are you slobs out there? Chris taking the branch, though, and whacking uh, Grandpa Meth off the branch, and he goes, ah, and falls all the way down. That's hysterical. Like, I just, I was laughing a lot just now. So then it's just Chris and Dushku, and they have a last of the Mohegans moment under a waterfall <laughs> to try to avoid getting caught, and they work their way... Adelwoods until Jesse, Dushku's name, she ends up getting captured by one of them and pulled away, and then he falls down a little hill. And this is my point. They see a sheriff. So, I mean, if you're going to be a killer, cannibalistic, hillbilly family, at least move out to where there's no active, like, police or anything, like, in the real middle of nowhere. Here, they're still doing act. This is like active routes and stuff for state police. So, they've never seen anything odd. They've never looked into these disappearances. And then he gets shot in the eye with an arrow, and that looks awesome, too. So, Jesse gets kidnapped and taken and back to the shack that should have been found, just like Jason's shack in Part 2. That should have been found so long before the events of that movie. I digress. And then she's chained to the bed, and he crashes the car through Chris, and he comes to the rescue. He starts stabbing the fuckers. He starts going left and right, trying to fight off. I'm guessing that's Two-Face, not Two-Face. <laughs> that's not one of them. That's not a name for any of them. Not Two-Face, One-Eye, or Three-Finger. Not sure which one it is, but one of those two, because I'm pretty sure those are like the ones that look alike, and then Grandpa Sawtooth. I can be totally wrong on that, too. It doesn't really matter what their names are. They're fucking hideous. One by one, they slay. Yeah, one by one, they... I don't know I was talking like that. They slay these cannibals, killing them. For some reason, Dushku picks up a, a bow and arrow and shoots the guy through the back of the head instead of just grabbing anything else. 
I mean, really? Like, does she, has, is she trained in archery? Like, that was a hell of a lucky shot. Uh, then Grandpa Meth comes, and they start trying to kill him. And then I forget who survives this and, like, how they even have kids. Like, first of all, if Gr- Grandpa Meth is the father of the other two that look alike, who had sex with Grandpa Meth? <laughs> I want a movie exploring that backstory. We never get one. We just get, a, like, five sequels that aren't fun at all really but they end up blowing up the whole shack and supposedly all three of these fuckers are dead and then they stop by the same pepto possible genius liquor trick guy at the gas station and this guy's involved in some way i forget if we see him in the next movie or in one of the sequels but don't don't we (laughs) i mean don't we see him again i'm pretty sure we see this guy because he he's definitely part of it. He says at the beginning, like to Chris, he says, "You know, you're gonna you're you're the one that needs to take care." So he knows that these people are out there. So I'm pretty sure they bring him back because he looks too familiar just to remember him from the small ass scene he has at the beginning and right here at the end. But that's wrong turn. It's fun. It's nothing great. So it's not much much to talk about here, except for running off on weird tangents like always. But uh, Texas Chainsaw Three tomorrow, along with Psycho Three. So double header. Take care, guys. Do you come down? So like they're not complete stupidity. <laughs> so they're not complete stupid people. <laughs> and they're climbing up a cliff. And there's like a river over. What? <laughs> there's like a river over. There's like a river over there. <laughs> This is even not even relevant to what's going on. They're climbing a cliff. There's a river over there. <laughs> oh, come on now. I'm going to be in a mood this whole time. There's this couple. There's this couple who's been homeless on a meth binge for the last 20 years. That's how that guy looks. <laughs> there's a couple. And there's, <laughs> there's a couple. They're climbing up. <laughs> Maybe it's some backwoods on the job drinking, like, facade that they that do down there so they're not completely you know illiterate and stupid <laughs> they are intelligent all right they're not intelligent <laughs>